What's going on beautiful people? Today is an exciting day and that is because I'm going back to Maidenhead Aquatics to put the fish in to the new build. Fast up there, whoa! Yes, looking good. Right, we need a hundred more. You probably already seen the build video. Anyway, that's what I've got to do today because today is actually Thursday, even though you're only seeing this whatever day, I don't know. But before I go anywhere, there's still so much work that I need to do in both studios because work doesn't stop just because you've left town. And the main thing being tackled today is this absolute monster of a tank. Well, the tank itself isn't a monster, but this complete absolute mass of moss massive moss <laughs> has turned into just too much and something needs to be done right now so this is going to go one of two ways i'm going to trim it all off it's going to be absolutely fine and go back nicely with everything trimmed in really neat or underneath the massive moss there's going to be like loads of brown dead parts it's going to look horrendous i'm going to step back and hate it and have to restart the whole tank the good news is that both situations are a win-win for me if it looks good great if it doesn't look good i get to do it again yay i love that and the reason we can't keep it as it is is because the rainbow fish are getting bigger and bigger all the time they are way bigger than when i first got them now and they had more space when i first got them because they didn't have all of this growth so i need to make more room for them the plan was always to switch up the scape as they grow to give them more space in the aquarium because they were just juveniles when i first got them but one of the first things i'm going to need to do before i do anything is turn down that filter it's blowing quite hard which the fish love but if I start to trim anything with it going this fast in the tank there's gonna be mess everywhere I'm not even gonna be able to see what I'm doing okay job done the fish are like what on earth is going on <laughs> right I'm halfway through I started off with the scissors and realized straight away that like there's the I can't trim it, it's just too thick. Look down here in this bucket. So look, it's beautiful to look at, don't get me wrong, but that is so thick. Underside though, I don't know if we're picking it up on camera, it's all sort of rotten away, and that comes up about halfway. So if I was to trim it, it would just be the same situation again in no time. Stay on top of your trimming guys, unlike me, otherwise you have to rip out this beautiful stuff. Thinking about using it again in another scape though. Not all of it obviously because there's buckets worth and that's only half of it. We've still got this massive section here and look at this lot at the back. Oh my goodness. Right, I haven't got a clue how that's looking at the moment and I know what I've done here is gonna upset some of you but I can't just carry on as it was. It would just get even worse. And by worse, I mean there was basically no more room for the fish and they're growing. So this needed to happen. I'm quite liking potentially how it's going to look. Not sure yet though. Let's get that filter running, let it clear up. Sorry guys. Oh, there we go. Look, that's all getting wafted around straight away. A load of it at the moment that has already settled. So that's showing you just how much like grime in that the uh, the moss actually harbors amongst all of its leaves is moss leaves i don't really know i don't know what it is but to be fair that is part of the ecosystem so i guess it was okay surely it's gonna be better now to take all that out what happened now is my internal filter is going to suck up all of that waste and then i can just take that out and clean it off put it back in again probably do that a couple of times it should be crystal clear and we should be able to see more of the tank now and to be honest down here where there's still some brownie moss on the wood all of that will start growing again so i think i've done the right thing here Hopefully we don't have to tear the whole thing down. Although I do want to. <laughs> of course I do, it's me. <laughs> Guess what, I have got some really good news though on the rare fish ecosystem behind me here. So this has been running for a few months now. It's on autopilot mode and now babies are being produced regularly. This will be the second batch I've had from these awesome koi enders. I don't think many of the first batch survive. I've got some big Siamese algae eaters in here so possibly they picked a few of them off, which is bound to happen, you know. In a way, it's kind of a good thing because you can't keep hundreds and hundreds of, of guppies, can you? And that's how many will just produce in no time at all. <laughs> so yeah, as before, the majority of the babies are hanging around in this open sort of midsection, which is probably the worst place they could actually be. You know, it's gonna be so much easier to pick them off there. Go and hide, please. I mean, what are you doing out there? You're new, like, <laughs> you should be amongst all of this. Maybe some of you are, I don't know. Nope, I just went around everywhere in the bottom of the tank and th there's none of them. <laughs> They're all up in that top section. Do you want to be eaten or something? <laughs> it's definitely come from this female here because her belly's way smaller than it was. And this one is ready to pop as well now. Look at that, all that dark patch at the back, big rounded bottom to her. 
Yeah, and there's Dad, obviously. Um, or oh, not obviously, I'm assuming. Oh, there's another one right at the back of the tank there as well, looking huge. Oh, she's out of focus. So yeah, if you remember, I was hoping to get some Celestial Pearl Danio Fry as well. So if you look at them there, they keep going in and out of this area all the time. They're do definitely doing some kind of breeding. Now, Matt, who's a fish expert, suggests they'll definitely be sort of breeding in there. It's just that they've got to lay eggs, and then they're so much tinier than guppies when they're born, and probably quite easily picked off by all the other fish in this tank. I mean... We've got a lot going on everywhere, haven't we? So the chances are low, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. I mean, it, it might happen. I mean, it happened in my other tank with the Colombian Tetras, didn't it? So behind me in this tank are a load of Colombian Tetras. I've had them for a long time. They're really chunky and they look great. And this tank is, of course, the Amazon Aquarium, which I've just had to do a few things to. So all of that that you can see there, I took, by the way, for reference, it's a lot. <laughs> I just took out the top of this tank because it was covering so much. That has grown in no time. It's been about a week, and uh, I had probably less than this before, and just a minute ago, it's covering everything. We've got some green spot algae back on the glass again, but other than those two things, there's no issues at all with this tank. Just realized I haven't turned off all the lights behind it. Two secs. There we go, that's better. And I don't know if you're hearing that noise. Can you hear? Hang on. It's like and that's telling me it's time for you to clean your filter. That's why I like them, it's like a little alarm. Filter cleaning time, because if I don't have that, I just leave it. <laughs> yeah, look, lots of muck on this glass. Need to fix that quickly before I carry on what I'm saying. There we go, glass all clean. I've stirred up some of the substrate as well, which is actually quite good, because it'll get taken out by the filter, which we're gonna clean later as well. I'm not gonna do that now though, because it's not very interesting. <laughs> but yeah, Colombian Tetras, there we go, look. Look at these guys. So they've always been in a heavily stocked tank like you're seeing here. We didn't have the blue electric blue car as you can see, the three blue ones there. But all the other fish have been in with them in this tank the whole time. Uh, different setup, but still, yeah, same fish. You may also notice, look, we've got little baby versions of them all swimming around at the top there. So they are proof that it's, uh, that actually might be another generation as well there. I'm not entirely sure. But I mean, here's the full size adults for comparison. Absolute monsters. But it goes to prove though, doesn't it, you can breed fish in tanks with tons of other textures. You just need huge amounts of hiding spaces. Now, in this tank, I'm not sure if it would be possible at this stage. It should be though, because if these smaller babies got in these back areas and just stayed down there until they were big enough, they'd be fine. And to be honest, at the moment, they could still get picked off by the electric blue car quite easily, especially my big boy there, look. He could definitely pick off that baby tetra, but he doesn't. I wonder why that is. Hopefully it stays that way. Some people have said to me, when they get a taste for blood, <laughs> everything will be gone one day. I think by that point, they'll all be a bit bigger and they'll be moved and, and you know, I'll be doing something different with them. Maybe have a whole four foot tank for themselves. So yeah, I just thought that was a good note to share with everyone. You can breed fish in heavily stocked tanks. You just need plenty of hiding spaces. So it's now the next day since we took out all the moss, the dust has settled, it's cleared up. I'm, I'm not actually sure what I think. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, it looks it looks fantastic in terms of sort of naturalistic look. There's a lot more swim space for the fish. Look at the rainbows, by the way. Look at the colors there. So nice, right? Wow, whoa. <laughs> it's because it's early in the morning. See, I've had that massive blob of green right in that middle and everywhere else. It's fully opened things up. But, you know, I think it's just because I'm so used to seeing the greenness that I'm now seeing a lot of brown. <laughs> now, all this moss you're seeing down here, look, there's enough on there, and even that brown stuff, it'll all grow back again if I stay on top of it. But for me, the tank is done. It feels done. You know what I'm like, guys. Once you get to a point where we're taking things out, trimming everything back, it's time for a new setup. So I'm probably going to do a new setup. I mean, look at this. Look at this now, and it'll look so good if I do another one, won't it? We've got great new pieces of Java phones, like all these little... This driver phone you're seeing here, every shoot of that is like a new one that's grown in this tank. The main a bunch of it's just died off. It didn't adapt to the water. But all the new shoots, they did. That's the same for this side as well. So that's beautiful. I'll definitely be using that again. And what else is really good is this wood is now all cured, isn't it? So it's all got that nice sort of darker tone to it instead of it having that bright orange look when you first put spider wood into a tank. So that'll be really good to use again, I think. But I'm not going to use it the way I did this time, all coming forwards and out into the foreground because we want swim room. I'd actually like to be able to put a few more rainbows in there, to be honest. So I think I'll go for that massive open area and then lots and lots of decoration at the back and then masses of flow. I love seeing them 
like swimming as they are look oh look at that they just jump in and out of it and they do it all the time they love it remember it's a river fish so it's used to really fast flowing water and they can duck anywhere they want to to get out of that sort of fast flow if they want to but they, they don't they just like swimming right in it <laughs> it's almost like they just enjoy it like they go backwards and forwards so cool. And I've also got some really good news over here in one of my most recent tank setups, the Tiger Barb tank. So here is how we're currently sitting. Plants are growing like crazy. This Ludwigia grandulose you can see here was halfway down. It was like, it was the, at that point there when I planted it and now it's already grown up there. Same with that one there. And then all the stem plants at the back, the Rotalas, then the feel that sort of thing, all reaching the surface. And one of the best things as well about all of this, there's no more fungus on any of the wood. All the little critters like this Amano here have just been getting to work on it all along with the snails. And now there's nothing anywhere. I didn't even, oh no, sorry, tell a lie. I think that's the last bit. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell though, but overall there's a little brown tinge to everything. So this wood is leaching tannins. It's probably easy if I step back, look, maybe you'll be able to see it compared with say this tank. I don't know. I don't know if it's picking it up, but I can definitely by eye see that there's a lot more sort of a brown tinge to it. I'm not going to do anything about that. I'm just going to leave as it is. You know, it'll, it'll just keep progressing at its own pace and evolving how it wants to. Tiger barbs are still absolutely awesome though. Look at this. There is such personality in these fish. They sort of dart around and do their thing. They're never just sort of boring, you know what I mean? They're always always doing something. Like these guys are going in and out of the flow at the moment. Ones at the back are exploring. They've always got that sort of hunter look on them. Like they're ready to just ravage something. So it has been so, so long since I updated you on my little better fish paladarium here. Let me fill you in. Um, it's, it's doing all right, but... Yeah. And what I mean by that... Yeah. <laughs> is that the fish, look... The better fish, fantastic, it looks so good. What a beautiful looking fish, right? So that's a Dumbo better fish. <laughs> I'm sure there's some other fancy name, but I'm not very good with those. Overall, the tank is pretty good. It's like, it's growing quite nicely. Um, the Underneath the water, that is. We've got a real natural sort of look going on. It's quite dark, I'm not gonna lie, but I mean, that helps you, the fish stand out so, so good, doesn't it? And we've got some nice little mulmy pieces down the bottom, again, creating that real natural look. Now, the issue we've got is above water. Look at this. So basically, that light is too bright for those plants and they're just sort of, it's burning them and bleaching them. Do you know what I mean? Like the leaves there are actually white and it didn't really, it, it should thrive. I've got had other um, pieces of leaves before in other tanks that have absolutely thrived, but they haven't had a light right there. Someone drew uh, my attention to that a while ago. And that's the main reason really why, why I actually want to do this whole tank again. I'm gonna come up with something really cool, something that really does show off this better fish even better. I like green at the end of the day. There's not enough green on this for me. <laughs> So I'm going to go for like a simple scape, but but with just one or two plants. Oh, I've said this before, haven't I? That ain't going to happen. It's going to be an unsimple scape with a million plants, okay? If I just say that now, it covers me. <laughs> so yeah, that's one project that I'm really looking forward to, and I'm also looking forward to doing this one as well. I keep looking over it and thinking, yeah, it's okay, but it's not okay. I need to I need to do something that, you, that I love or I won't be taken care of. And I'm 100% not done with these fish yet. There's, I've still got a lot of enjoyment that I want to get out of them for, you know, many, many months to come. And it's not just a case of, of breaking it all down, getting new fish and moving on. No, 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 I'm loving the rainbow fish. They're so cool. If anything, like I said before, I want more. It's just a, this to me. Yeah, it's not a fun look, and I don't like it, it's coming out. But I mean, yeah, there's a load of plants in it we can still use. We've got this here is Rotala Hra. I mean, wow, look at that. There's lots of Anubius, there's Bulbitus, there's like plants galore in this tank that can be reused. Not necessarily in the next setup though, because I want to do something quite sort of island islandy. Do you know what I mean? A few islands dotted about, so there's loads of room between them all. And I think that'll work really well and create channels for the uh, for the rainbow fish. It's one of the best things about rainbow fish is just how they behave. Look, look at this. This is this is really cool, isn't it? And if I can make even more space in the tank, then we can have even more rainbow fish as well. Because this is nowhere near like sort of full stocking level for a tank this size. Mind you, don't quote me on that. I don't go by all the sort of internet rules. I just go by what I look at and, and think is a good amount or not. But to me, at the moment, it looks chock-a-block kind of, because everything's right here. Uh, once there's more room, that won't be the case, will it? Oh dear, you may be noticing a big gap here. <laughs> Literally, right after I said to you that I wanted to change it, 
I just thought, no time like the present. I'm always like that. If you really want to do something, you should jump in and do it straight away. And to be honest, the bowl is going to be next because I want to do the bowl again. Not too dissimilar to before, but not with the pearl weed. It is impossible to, to keep on top of. You just, I just can't do it. Like if this was the only tank I had, yeah, probably could, but otherwise, oh, it's ridiculous. And what's awesome is we've also got the Hygrophila pinnatifida just growing out the top there like a tree, but I can't just keep it as a bowl of pearl weed, can I? That is not fun at all for anyone, including myself. Yeah, look at this, the tank is all cleaned out and ready to go. So I'm gonna be going for a Wallstad style ecosystem aquarium for this better fish. So no tech, well, apart from the light, but no tech inside the aquarium at all. That's kind of what I did with this tank down here with the Axel Rob Besporas. Again, I made some errors. First one being, don't put moss in it. Although I am now pretty decent in terms of uh, keeping up on moss trimming, just not particularly in certain tanks. <laughs> And come on, that is completely true, because look, you see, moss kept up with trimming, moss kept up with trimming. I mean, there's even more babies since the last time I flicked over to this tank at the start of the video. There's loads now, I've actually seen, there's two generations. I've seen some of the other ones because they're quite a bit bigger. You see that one? It's struggling to focus, but that one there is much bigger than the rest of them. So we've got two generations, yay! Oh, and another example of trimming mosses. That moss is trimmed, so is that. This tank looking good, isn't it, eh? How good is that looking? Sweet. And the moss over in the Amazon Aquarium as well. Keep him right on top of that. So there, for instance, that's trimmed down almost to where the glue is, so I couldn't go any like further down than that. But if you look down here um, on the rocks and that, really tight. I mean, there's the best, ex no, <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me, there's, <laughs> there's the best example. Look, nice and tight, it's gonna look so good. Need to keep on top of moss trimming. But that's it for this one, guys. If you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you on the next one.